last meeting of April 8th, 2013 of the Dubuque Community School Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Mr. Barton? Here. Mr. Baitine? Mr. Davis? Here. Mr. Donahue? Mr. Kruger? Present. Ms. Ryan? Here. Mr. Strelo? Here. Okay, for the Pledge of Allegiance, we have Eisenhower Elementary with Principal Andy Ferguson to start us off with that. Thank you. I have students here from Eisenhower School, and they are part of our leadership group. And one of the things that they do throughout the year is schedule um, school spirit events and also service projects. Three service projects each year, and they're going to lead us in the pledge. Jane, you want to come up and introduce yourself? Jaden Beshin, fourth grade. Kane McWilliams, fourth grade. Lauren Bergquist, fifth grade. Brooke Healy, fourth grade. Adam Curtis, fifth grade. Marin Winders, fifth grade. Zachary Jameson, fifth grade. Please stand. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Guys. Way to go. Yeah, baby. I love that we do that. Start, you guys started about it. Okay, I move that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is submitted. I move that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the special meeting on March 4th and the regular meeting on March 11th, 2013 as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the special meeting on March 4th and the regular meeting on March 11th as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. All right, board salutes. Well, yeah. Uh, close. Yep, oh, yeah, board salutes. Right, board Do we have any board salutes that anybody, we've been on spring break, so it's everybody's got to get back in the mode of, of what's happening. Well, I just, I have one. Uh, I want to thank uh, Stacy for a nice job uh, yesterday's paper with, uh, with our Tom uh, Kirshner. And uh, if anybody do doesn't know what Tom does, he does go out in the community, look for those uh, kids that uh, don't have uh, a diploma, high school diploma, and helps them achieve that. And uh, I tell you what, uh, the man is uh, unbelievable. And uh, he's just uh, really uh, uh, bonds with, uh, with uh, the kids. And uh, success is, uh, is, is showing in our district. So I want to thank Tom and have a board salute for him as well. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? George? No? All right, let's move on to, we have a lot of public hearings to get through. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and get started with those. You need a motion? I do, please. I move that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the budget estimate and authorized payment of the legal notice publication costs to the Telegraph Herald. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the budget estimate and authorized payment of the legal notice publication cost to the Telegraph Herald. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes, and Mr. Kelleher, you're going to present this. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Ryan Gans. Um, each year, the business department formulates this book that's called the Certified Budget Proposal. Um, it lists the components of the, the aid and levy document, which lists or proceeds <coughs> to give you the tax levy rate for the next school year, which will be for 13-14. This book gives you a good breakdown of what makes up that levy, um, how the, the spending authority is calculated, and um, what our unspent balance is. I'm just going to go through a few of the pages, not the whole book. You can do that at, um, at home, at your leisure. It will be on our website tomorrow morning once the levy rate has been approved. Um, I'm going to go and take you to page 7 of the document. 
here, I wanted to bring to your attention the instructional support levy. Um, on that page is a graph showing the, the blue is the levy rate that was promised back six years ago when we asked the, the public to increase the instructional support levy rate from 5 to 10 percent. And during that campaign, we, uh, we promised that the taxpayers we would not raise the levy rate of higher than the current rate, which was $16.88 at that time. As you can tell, the purple amount column is what the levy rate actually turned out to be. So throughout the four years, the, the, the year we promised, and then the next three years, we did not raise the rate higher than the, the level set in 0809. Last year, we actually lowered the rate by $1.40. And this year, you can see even another decrease, which you'll be asked to approve later, of another 70 cents. So we are happy to announce that we honored that promise to the taxpayers. We did not increase the levy rate at all and actually decreased it during that five years. So something to celebrate. Um, the next page I want to bring your attention to is page eight. Here we list what the UEN per pupil balances are for cash, unspent balance, and unassigned fund balance, as well as solvency ratio. You can tell by these numbers, we've listed Dubuque at the top to make comparisons to the other, and in several of the rest of the UENs, and in several of those categories, we are at the top or near the top <coughs> of each of those. So we are currently, as of 2012, the year end, sitting in excellent financial shape. Let's flip to page 10. <coughs> that has a three-year history, as you see, of the components of the levy rate to come down to the total. You see the total on the bottom. And 11.12 was $16.88 roughly. Then the dollar 40, we lowered it to $15.40. And for this year, we're asking you to approve a $14.69 levy rate. You can see the makeup. There's the general fund, the management fund, and the pebble fund make up that total levy rate. <coughs> also down below on that page, wanted to bring to your attention the cash reserve. Over the past couple of years, we've reported um, our cash balance at the end of each fiscal year, and it has um, steadily increased. We hope to get to a level that was three months of our expenditures. Well, we were able to achieve that goal with the cash reserve levy rate. Now you see for this year, we're not going to have any cash reserve levy rate. Um, so there won't be that increase to the levy that we had in past years. We've attained the level of cash that we feel comfortable with. The next page I want to bring your attention to is page 11. And I ask if you have any questions throughout that, please stop and interject with those. Um, here we also every year do a comparison of our levy rate to last year's levy rates for the other UENs. Now you can see we are at the bottom currently um, of those eight school districts. In the past we've been always near the med middle of that group, but now with the cash reserve decline and our levy rate decline, we've actually moved to the bottom. Now this is, again is comparing it to last year's, so some of these schools may be also lowering their rate as well. Don't know that until they approve it, but that was what the information we had at the time. <coughs> and then the final page of this document I want to bring your attention to is we compare last year's rate to this year's rate for the Dubuque taxpayer. This comparison comes from the city budget. They use this in their uh, annual budget each year where they compare the average property value of a house from one year to the next and factor in the rollbacks and then their levy rates. So we use that information to do the similar thing. You can see there was no equalization order over the past year, but there was an increase right here in the rollback. And what that means is because there's an increase in the rollback, more of your valuation became, or more of your uh, uh, evaluations became subject to tax. So that went up a little bit, 
So you look and see the taxable values increase slightly because of that rollback. Now we factor in the school rate, and you can see the decline in rate. Even with that increase in rollback, we are still having a decline in the amount of actual tax dollars that school, for the school portion of the levy. So that is good news as well. How that affects commercial and industrial property. They do not have the rollbacks, or they had the rollbacks, but they were stayed at 1.0 for commercial property. So you can see a substantial decrease there compared to what the residential property decreased for our, um, the average property is at 357,000 and you can see they're gonna pay $254 less in actual property tax dollars for the school. Real money. Correct. Real money out of their pocket. Yeah. Industrial, it's even a bigger percentage because the value, valuation of the average property is higher. But again, it's a, a, a nice chunk of change that they don't have to pay that they had to in the past. And again, I want to make sure you understand this is just the school levy portion of the tax rate. Um, there's also all, all those other municipalities in, you know, your Dubuque's rate and the county rate and all that when you get your tax bill, but the school portion has gone down. I believe you're just showing off. <laughs> we got to take the good news when we can, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have from this document. Did anyone have any questions? This is I, just a comment. I, I think it's absolutely admirable that we are making sure that we're doing what we can to be as careful with taxpayer dollars as we are. And that's that's great. It's just even if it's a couple bucks lower, it just sends such a message that that we know how to hold the line on spending. I mean, we don't want a cheap school district. We've proven that our building projects aren't done on the cheap. But um, certainly in a, in a time of economic difficulty, we are not piling on. It's so easy for governmental entities who want to wind up with a shortfall to just pass that on to the citizen and suck money out of the economy at exactly the wrong time. So I just I think it's terrific that you're doing the job you have, and you've accumulated a three-month cash reserve throughout this process too. So and you have to keep in mind too that levy rate um, decreases offset or helped because of the valuations in Dubuque sure. have gone up. You know other places they don't go up. Like what, I believe West Des Moines and Des Moines area, they didn't go up this past year, so they can't drop the levy rate like we can. We have the fortunate um, economy that our valuations have gone up. It was about a three and a half, three and a quarter percent increase over the past year. Kevin, my comment, and other board members and public at large, I guess my comments would be a couple. One is, <clears throat> over the last two years, our levy rate for the school district portion of the property tax has decreased by about 15%. The school district property taxes make up about 55% of the total property tax bill with the city at maybe 25, the county at 20, and some various other pieces at five. Um, one of the main factors, I mean, some of the things we've done at the school district have helped to help lower that rate, but I think the biggest factor has been the economic vibrancy of the property tax base in the Dubuque Community School District, which generally is the property tax base of the city of Dubuque, which has risen over the last several years and has been the kind of a growing, uh, a, a lot of things that went on 10 years ago are starting to come to fruition with TIF districts that are going off TIF that <clears throat> we've had an increase in the property tax base. So. A lot of that is because of the increased property tax base and the economic vibrancy is our local community has helped keep that, us keep that rate low. The second point I'd like to make is there was a time when I went on the school board in 2006 when uh, we were borrowing money in August, September to get to the point where we got our S September property tax revenues. There was a time when uh, Pre or Governor Culver, we had that 10% uh, Reduction. reduction where they uh, sw swiped some of our cash and we were looking at borrowing money then and there were some pretty dire straits and from that from being in that point where we had virtually no cash to the point where now yeah. our, our cash reserves are um, is a is a big change from where we were and uh, we're a much healthier 
on a financial basis now than we were five years ago as a school district. So it's something that I guess the whole community can be very proud of and certainly the board is very happy that we're at the place we are right now with our financial situation. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. I need a motion to go into public hearing. I move that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow public comments. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow for public comments. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Then we, if there's anybody would like to comment. Like to comment? Now is your chance on this issue. I move the Board of Education close the public hearing or return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? It's and been moved that the Board of Education adopt the budget estimate for fiscal 2013-2014 as published. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the budget estimate for fiscal 2013-2014 as published. Is there any further discussion? I would like to be Kevin Kelleher's agent in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Any other dis comments? Or I, I guess Otto and I were at some of those meetings <laughs> when there were some very difficult budget discussion issues three or four years ago when there were cuts and I mean some of that relates to the cuts. Um, and while we have cash, our ability to spend the cash is limited by what goes on in Des Moines and we're still really looking forward to getting some sort of resolution of the allowable growth so that the state will allow us to spend some of the resources we have to continue the fine education we provide in the Dubuque Community School District. So that's something we're really looking forward to now is that ability to spend and while there is good news today, there was three or four years ago, Otto and I were at some of those meetings and it was, it was a little different. So uh, it's good to remember that times weren't always as rosy as they are right now. Well, it might be, it's good news today, but we still need the legislatures to make their yeah, decision right. that our budget has to be certified on the 15th, by the 15th, and um, well, they're supposed to- Will the 15th? Well, Will we certify our budget by the 15th? We have to. Well, why, why doesn't the state certify their well, budget by the time the they're question. supposed to certify their that's budget? The, that's, the, that's the big question. So if anybody can have any contact with any of our legislatures <laughs> out there, <laughs> we need them to know that this has to get done. So all those in favor of adopting the, the, the budget estimate for 2013-2014 as published, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Next one. Okay. I move that the Board of Education receive and file proof of notice of public hearing on the Hempstead <coughs> High School renovation project and authorized payment of legal notice publication costs of the Telegraph Herald. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the Hempstead High School renovation project and authorized payment for the legal notice publication cost to the Telegraph Herald. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all those opposed? Motion carries. Can I have Kevin come on up here? Do we have... Can we have oh, sorry. Yep. We open it up, but let's have Kevin come on up here. And we want to review the project? Yeah. Okay. We need to have, who's going to come up? Kevin, Kevin? Why don't you come on up here, Kevin? I'm, th and I'd like to mention that, that we, since I've been on the, uh, I've been uh, the chairman of this <coughs> renovation committee, we, we met about a year ago, and this has been an ongoing thing for what we met about every, every couple weeks for a long time. So, uh, so anyway, so this has been an ongoing project for, uh, uh, for a lot of us. And so coming here tonight, uh, and uh, discussing some of this is uh, pretty exciting for, for those who have been uh, on the uh, on that committee. So, uh, Kevin, go ahead and I'll give you an overview of the scope or the overall, if you could. Okay, yes. I can do that. Yes. Um, the scope includes um, replacing the auditorium um, with a new state-of-the-art auditorium facility and all the associated kind of back-of-house spaces with lighting and rigging and uh, uh, 
dressing rooms and restrooms, as well as all the music department spaces from choir to orchestra, library storage, instrument storage. Uh, there was a real shortage there. Um, also an auxiliary gymnasium uh, and two new locker rooms for athletics. And then renovations of uh, the athletic locker rooms, wrestling room spaces, um, many of the classrooms that are in the east and north portion of the building. And then a new uh, addition on the east that will provide a new main entrance, a controlled entrance to provide security uh, uh, and a little more safety. Um, some expanded parking in some areas and a little less parking in others. Uh, and it will be the conversion of almost the entire building over to a uh, geothermal heating and cooling system as well as uh, uh, fire, fire sprinkler um, and a uh, lot more safety. So. It touches almost every part of the remaining part of the building, of course, except for the kitchen, the cafeteria, and um, the swimming pool. We are doing some work in the swimming pool, though. So that's the overview. And I think it's important to note, too, that um, because I, I've received uh, quite a few comments um, during this uh, process over the last year is, uh, well, how come don't we just, uh, why, why didn't we build a new high school? Uh, out of all this, and and you were part of that the original project, and we spent uh, what was it twenty? Is it 20, 23 million? Is that does that sound right? Sixteen to twelve. Yeah, it was in the teens. The first four phases combined. Okay, so let's say twenty, and then uh, we're looking at uh, an additional thirty here. So for for uh, uh, for fifty million, uh, we're looking at a pretty. Uh, basically a, a, a new high school that would cost uh, in uh, today's dollars uh, twice that, about, about $109 million, that's what it came out to be. Yes. So and we were very uh, vigilant as far as what, what we uh, were going to do with the Hempstead. We had a brainstorming session that lasted for months and months as far as what we, uh, what we all want. And then we kind of took it from there and just kind of uh, eliminated some things that uh, were were, uh, were wants instead of uh, the needs, and uh, this is what we came up, uh, came up with. And I'm very proud of uh, the committee and where we uh, where we directed uh, our attention to. So, and uh, thank you, Kevin, for all the hard work too, and your staff. Thank you. So. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow public comment. Second. It's been moved and seconded. The Board of Education open the public hearing to allow for public comments. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Anybody like to make comments on this project? Mm -hmm. Now is the time. All right. I move the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution adopting plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimated total cost of the Hempstead High School renovation project. Whereas on the 11th day of February 2013, plan, specifications, form of contract, and the estimated total costs were initially filed with the Secretary for the construction of certain public improvements described in general as the Hempstead High School renovation project. And whereas a notice of hearing on the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for said public improvements was published as required by law. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education at the Dubuque Community School District, Dubuque, Iowa, Section 1, that the said plans, specifications, form of contract, and the estimated total cost for the Hempstead High School renovation project are hereby approved and adopted as the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated total cost for said public improvement as described in the preamble of this resolution. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution adopting plan specifications, form and contract, and estimated total cost of the Hempstead High School renovation project as read. <laughs> All those in favor, is there any discussion with any of that? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The resolution passes. And we'll have the reporting of the bids. Good afternoon, board members. Good 
I'm always happy to talk about our construction projects going on in the district. Uh, on March 21st, we received three uh, bids from three contractors. The first uh, contractor was Kramer Brothers, who submitted a base bid amount of $31,777,000. The second one, Larson Construction Company, reported a base bid of $30,600,000. And Conlon Construction reported or uh, submitted a base bid of $30,000,000. $349,000, the apparent low bidder. Having said that, Buildings and Grounds would like to add three alternates uh, to improve classroom duct noise associated with the heating systems in three locations and add $9,000 to that number. We'd also like to accept <clears throat> number six, which would <clears throat> replace, would, would omit replacing the existing precast concrete panels on the west side of Hempstead there where automotive and the shops are at. That would be a deduct of $15,000. So with the $15,000 credit and a $9,000 add, the net gain, the net deduct would be $6,000 off of the apparent low uh, price, bringing the <coughs> new construction amount to $30,343,000. With the 3% uh, contingency, that would bring our new construction total cost to $31,253,290. Before going on, can I answer any questions or anything for anyone? <coughs> Your packet should include a letter from FEH recommending the, the uh, contract be awarded to uh, comma construction, and in the last paragraph, they're recommending a 6% contingency fee, and we would like to change that to 3%. <clears throat> I'm Bill, jump in on that. We talked uh, at length today. This uh, project is slightly over what uh, was projected, and uh, so we looked at uh, um, that 6% versus 3% had conversation uh, with, with the architects to see if that was uh, uh, in line with, with what Historically, we, we have needed and, and feel pretty comfortable that 3% should, uh, should uh, suffice with uh, what our needs will be with this building. And having said that, Buildings and Grounds would support the letter of recommendation from FEH also to award the uh, contract to Collin Construction. May I answer any questions? We would have the option since it was over to rebid, but <coughs> while it's a relatively small percentage based on the size of the project, as Otto laid out, uh, extensive work has been put into needs versus wants. So without making substantial changes, uh, reductions in what we would be doing, uh, it would be difficult for us to assume we would see any change in, in those bid prices. And knowing that that's been pretty well vetted by the stakeholders, that this is what we need versus uh, some of the wants, it would be hard to go back and, and pull back some things that uh, we think is uh, things that we think are vital for the education of our students. And President, I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution making award of construction contract. Be it resolved by the Board of Education of Dubuque Community School District, Dubuque, Iowa, Section 1, that the following bid for the Hempstead High School renovation project described in the plans and specifications heretofore adopted by this board is accepted, the same being the lowest responsive responsible bid received for such work as follows. Contractor, Conlin Construction of Dubuque, Iowa, amount of base bid, would that be? 30,343,000 30, now, or 49, whatever you want. Um, section two, that the president and secretary are hereby directed to execute a contract with a contractor, such a contract not to be binding on the district until approved by this board. It's got, we gotta know exactly which number. What number right. am I, are we Those, wanting to have? Is it the, the 31? 343. 343. So Okay, 343. 30 million, 343. All right. <coughs> Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution making award of construction contract as read to Conlin Construction for the base bid amount of $30,343,000. Is, what? Is there any discussion? I guess my... 
I would like to say something at this point. The Hempstead project has been a project or a building that's been in need of a lot of work for a long time. Um, it's as I've traveled around Northeast Iowa at the other similar 4A schools, this building is it's shown its wear and it is in it's probably at the lower tier of of those high school facilities and uh, um, in order to make a, have a great community, we need great high schools. And by moving forward with this project at Hempstead, this should bring this building up to be one of the uh, move it from the bottom tier of high school facilities to as far as a physical plant to one of the up, to an upper tier facility. So it's uh, I'm very excited that we finally are at a time when we can afford and we can move forward and we can complete this project. So I'm looking very forward to. Uh, getting this project underway and fully support the uh, recommendation of the district. Termites have eaten through the original <laughs> walls. There's dry rot in the A-wing and the auditorium is collapsing. At some point, I think we should probably fix the place up. I think it was bad when we were there. It was <laughs> awful when we were there. There were hunks of the pegboard missing from the the carpet was all ratty. When Neil Otto scored the first touchdown in the history of Hampstead. Yes, he did. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. To Conlon Construction. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. I move that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. Wait a second. So we've got other Did stuff I jump to one? do. Yep, Did I miss do. one? We've got summer projects, and it's a special tab. It's a big, long one here. You've got a special piece of paper that was put on your. Oh, oh. sorry. I That's okay. My motion. I rescind. withdraw my motion. This one. You guys are fast. I know there's a basketball game tonight, but let's get through this. <laughs> I don't know who's playing. Otto just told me there's a game. <laughs> Yeah, let's start with Anderson Design and Consulting. We'll start with, um, are you going to talk about that, Bill? All right. Everyone, I'll just give you a quick uh, overview of the summer projects. The warehouse asphalt drive replacement project, that's going to be replacement of the entire existing asphalt drive along the north, east, and south sides of the administration warehouse. Uh, the regrading new base stone, uh, some new concrete curb and gutter, new stormwater piping and lead and outlet, and of course a new asphalt surface. The next project is Marshall Elementary School, the North Wall Tuck Pointing, and I'm asking to defer our recommendation for about a month. We came into some information today that I'm, I'm not so sure the contractor's qualified to proceed with that, and I'd like a couple weeks to investigate that before coming back to you. The next project would be the uh, senior high restroom renovations. That's removal and replacement of all existing toilets, fixtures, partitions, lightings, floor finishing, wall finishing, entry doors, toilet accessories for two men's and two women's restrooms. That's and all? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a couple other things okay. coming your way. Now those are located on first and third floor above and below the business office. That's where the women's are, and if you go east, that's where the men's are. Okay. And then we have the senior high roof and insulation replacement project. That's removing ex the existing roofing and insulation in two areas. Install a new R42 insulation with new single ply roofing, new roof drains, and two new roof hatches. And those locations are at the Nora Gym Entry, and then the area above the auditorium. We did the small gym last summer, now we're moving westward to uh, complete that project. And this will finally replace all the ballast roof at Senior. The ballast roof <coughs> is the rock. If you've ever been on a roof and see all the rock pebbles, we're finally gonna be away from that. It's very difficult to find leaks when you have a, a roof design like that. And that is a recap of the summer projects. May I answer any questions? Anybody have questions for Bill on the summer projects? Mm -hmm. I move the Board of Education. Thanks, Bill. Receive and file proof of publication mm -hmm. of notice of public hearing on the summer projects, authorized payment of the legal notice, publication cost of Telegraph Herald. Second. 
it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and, and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the summer projects and authorize payment of the legal notice publication cost to the Telegraph Herald. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? That motion carries. I'm, I move that the Board of Education open the public hearing to allow public comments. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education open public hearing to allow for public comments. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Anybody have any comments? Right. I move that the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education close the public hearing and return to regular session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution adopting plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated total cost of the summer projects. Whereas on the 11th day of February 2013, plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated total costs were initially filed with the Secretary for the construction of certain public improvements described in general as the summer projects. And whereas a notice of hearing on the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total costs for said public improvements was published as required by law. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District, Dubuque, Iowa, Section 1, that the said plan, specifications, form of contract, and the estimated total cost for the summer projects are hereby approved and adopted as the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimated total cost for said public improvement as described in the preamble of this resolution. I need a second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution adopting plan, specific, specification, form, and contract, and estimate total cost of the summer projects as read. All those in favor? Is there any discussion, Do first we have of all? Bill's got, is this, is well, oh. Bill already kind of went through it all, right? Okay. And the bids are. Come on next. You do need to report the bids? All right, come on. Well, well let's, let's vote fine. on this. Yeah. Let me get through this first. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution adopting plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated total cost of summer projects. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Now we will have the report of bids. I'll start off with the warehouse, warehouse drive project. Uh, the bids were received on March 21st, 2013. With an estimated construction cost of $195,000 for the project, we received bids from five contractors. Ports and construction base bid of $297,500. McDermott excavating, $213,212. McLean excavating, $253,500. And McAuliffe excavating, $220,000, $860. $220,000. $863 and Drew Cook and Son, $207,000. Keep in mind this asphalt's 37 years old and was put in during the mid 1970s. Buildings and grounds would also recommend that we pick up the alternate to connect the downspouts at the Central Kitchen Warehouse Print Center, get those underground and take away an icy problem that we have any that we have every winter on the parking lot. That would bring the project up to $210,500. I also wanted to report that uh, Drew Cook and Son did not check that they had received addendum number two. The advertisement for bids published on February 14th advises that the Board of Education reserves the right to waive informalities and irregularities, and that's what I see us having. Because Mr. Cook indicated and confirmed he does have the landscaping required in addendum number two, although he did not report it, uh, receiving it. His work is included and there's no material difference between him and the next contractor. So there's no material differences, there's no advantage. Mr. Cook is going to provide what the uh, specifications call for. Therefore, Buildings and Grounds would recommend entering into contract with him. Marshall Elementary School, as I said before, I'd like to defer that until next facilities meeting. The senior high, uh, high school restroom renovations with an estimated construction cost of $160,000. Three bids were received, Tricon Construction, $178,000.
Plower Construction, 198,417, and Ports and Construction, 158,022 dollars. And we would recommend entering into an agreement with uh, Ports and Construction. The roof insulation replacement project at Senior High School, estimated construction cost of $160,000, three bids were received. Keezy Roofing, $197,875. Geisler Brothers, $198,400. And Jim Geezy Commercial Roofing, $164,547. And we were not surprised that was higher than 160 planned because we added two roof hatches after the estimate from Anderson Design was received. We expected to see an additional cost of $8,000. So we're happy to see it just $4,000 over budget. So while it's over budget, we would recommend uh, entering into agreement with them also. And may I answer any questions on those? Yeah, Bill, I have one question yes. about the and denim um, with, uh, with the warehouse. And, and I know I've, I've checked with uh, uh, I know the city, when they uh, do their, their biddings and everything, they more or less kind of, uh, um, if, if somebody doesn't have that addendum in there, they don't open the bid. Uh, have we checked our attorney on that? Or, I mean, I, I know you read something there that it's our, at our discretion, but, I mean, I just, just kind of want to get our... Yes, we have. Uh, I'm not in the impression that it's an automatic disqualifier. Uh, he is including the landscape and everything in addendum two. He doesn't have the email, he didn't get it. He has the landscaping price in there from Nalma Nursery, so we know that work is included in it. He's not getting any competitive edge over the next lowest uh, contractor, and it's fair here. The materials are all in his contract, and we just saw it as an informality that he didn't report that he had addendum two. So based on uh, conversations with uh, our attorneys, uh, I'm, I'm recommending that we enter to, into the agreement. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution making award of construction contract. Be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District, Dubuque, Iowa, Section 1, that the following bid for the summer projects described in the plans, specifications, heretofore adopted by the Board, is accepted, the same being the lowest responsive, responsible bid received for such work as follows. Forum Warehouse Asphalt Drive Replacement Contractor, Drew Cook and Sons, Excavating of Dubuque, Iowa, amount of bid, 207000 Senior High School Restroom Renovation, Contractor, Ports and Construction Incorporated of Dubuque, Iowa, amount of bid $158,022. Senior High School Roof and Insulation Replacement, Contractor, Jim Giese, Commercial Roofing, Inc. of Dubuque, Iowa, amount of bid $164,547. Section 2, that the President and Secretary are hereby directed to execute a contract with the contractor, such contract not to be binding on the district until approved by this board. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution making award of construction contract as read for the Forum Warehouse Asphalt Drive Replacement to Drew Cook and Sons Excavating of Dubuque, Iowa. I had that at, I read, did you say 210, 210,500 with the change? Correct. Okay, not as you read at 205 or 207. $210,500. The Senior High School Restroom Renovation to Ports and Construction of Dubuque, Iowa to $158,022. And the Senior High, High School Roof and Insulation Replacement to Jim Giese Commercial Roofing Incorporated of Dubuque, Iowa for $164,547. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. And now we have arrived at we the much anticipated open forum segment of the, the agenda. All right. I move that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, anybody wishing to address the School board? 
I think that kid in the back wanted to twirl there, but he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I move at the. <laughs> Everybody's looking where, where? I move that he's asleep. He can't see yeah. him. I move that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I've just got to find my spot. I move that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Is there anyone wanting to pull anything out? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Okay, make sure you look at your sheet. Of, make sure we start with page. Let's see, we're going on to facilities and support services. And Mr. Bytine is not here. I am Mr. Bytine wanted me to go ahead. Are you going to go ahead and do it? So, sure. okay, I'm going to say mine was out of order, so make sure okay. you start Page with. Two of two. Well, go to one, one first. Two. It's just put in there differently. Oh, and oh there it is. So just make sure you read. Okay. Support services. All right, you want to go ahead and start with the. Revenue bonds? Approximately $10 million school infrastructure sales services and use tax revenue bonds series 2013. First of all, I'll make a motion that the, I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution fixing the date of sale of approximately $10 million school infrastructure sales services and use tax revenue bonds series 2013, approving electronic bidding procedures and improving the official statement. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the resolution fixing the date of sale of approximately $10 million to school infrastructure sales services and use tax revenue bonds series 2013 approving electronic bidding procedures and approving the official statement. We are going to need a roll call um, on this vote. Ms. Lucas. Mr. Barton. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Kruger? Aye. Ms. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Strelo? Aye. The motion carries. Okay. Second uh, is I would like to move that the Board of Education approve the facility rental fee schedule for the 2013-2014 school year. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the facility rental fee schedule for this 2013-2014 school year. Is there any discussion? It's my understanding these fees remain pretty much the same except for the book fee, which goes up $5. Is that correct, Stan? Correct. Yep, everything's similar in the book fee. Any other discussion, questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the student fee schedule for the 2013-2014 school year. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the student fee schedule for the 2013-2014 school year. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the food and nutrition meal charges for the 2013-2014 school year. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the food and nutrition meal charges for the 2013-2014 school year. Is there any discussion? I believe what, did that go up? Yeah, I think it did. 15 cents, correct? Okay. Kevin, would you, would you please? Meeting again, board members. Uh, we are asking for a 15 cent increase to both the lunch and the be breakfast program uh, cost of meals. Uh, we would we would be required by federal law to increase it five to ten cents anyway to meet the new federal guidelines that says the the cost of a full lunch has to 
um, come to a certain dollar amount based on what the free and reduced amount rate is anyway. But there's also been some substantial decreases in the proprietary fund uh, profit over the last couple of years. So that's why we're asking for higher than the five to 10 cents and we're going up to 15 cents this year due to additional costs, mainly because of the fruits and vegetable requirements uh, handed down by the federal mandates. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number eight to Portson Construction Inc. on the Dazzle Field Renovation and Hempstead Field Improvements Project in the amount of $21,019. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number eight to Ports and Construction Inc. on the Dalzell Field Renovation and Hempstead Field Improvement Projects in the amount of $21,019. Is we there any discussion? Um, Question? You want to? Would you like to address? Sure. Would you like to address that real quick? Go over what or those changes are. I know there's some. There was a deduction and a couple additions. I'm just trying. To Hello folks, uh, change order eight uh, is a uh, summary of a number of uh, mostly minor uh, additions, some reductions in the plan. Uh, the significant reduction, uh, we had carried a $40,000 landscaping allowance. The uh, actual bids for that work came in less than that by $4,500, which is a good thing. However, we found that uh, the nature of the soil, the uh, topsoil at Del, at uh, Dalzell Field and the senior uh, campus is really unsuitable. I mean, uh, Bill used much of the dirt that we stripped off the uh, uh, football field uh, for filling in areas uh, on Clark Drive uh, adjacent to the transportation facility, but they weren't uh, really the kind of materials. It was uh, sand mixed in with uh, topsoil. And uh, so the, the one uh, real significant add in this change order is to import black dirt that is uh, uh, quality material that uh, will uh, sustain the plants that we're uh, that we've included in the landscaping. Mm -hmm. That in itself was twelve thousand dollars, and then there are a, a number of uh, essentially minor items, with the exception of one uh, in the press box. There's some real sophisticated uh, electronic equipment for running the scoreboard and the sound systems, and uh, we found that uh, we needed to add an air conditioning uh, system for that one room in the scorers room. And that was uh, forty six hundred dollars. So, the total of all the items, uh, there are about uh, eight or ten of them, is twenty one thousand dollars. Thank you. you is there any Thank other you. questions? Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Before we go on from, and we're still on the Dalzell field, I would like I'd ask Bill if he would come up and give us an update. I've had a lot of people ask me where we are with that. I know that the first event. Are we gonna have Kevin? Okay, yeah. or Ken? Okay, we're gonna, um, the first event is next Tuesday, which is the Hempstead Senior Soccer Game. And everybody keeps asking me, because my daughter's a soccer player, are we really gonna play? What's this, what's gonna be happening there? They're so excited, so I thought we would, could you give us an update as to where we are, what's not gonna be there, what's done, and so forth? You bet I will. I don't know if anybody noticed, but the uh, winter this year was kind of really crummy. <laughs> and uh, Portson, uh, early in the project, uh, December, January, had uh, sort of anticipated they were gonna run into some real issues. There's a lot of concrete to pour out there. And there's still a fair amount of concrete to pour on the east side in the parking lot and getting to the team buildings. However, the bleachers are done. The west ticket uh, entry is done. The uh, approach to the school, uh, alongside the school, up the big ramp, that's ready to go. So the facility will be open. In fact, it's being used as we speak. Uh, there is access to the track, access to the field. Uh, soccer balls are making their way down to Grandview Avenue. Uh, <laughs> people are running on the track. It's kind of good to see people are walking on the track. And uh, so uh, Friday, uh, April 12th, <coughs> this coming Friday, is the substantial completion date for Dalzell. And we're going to attain that. And the city will come in and uh, issue a certificate of occupancy. 
uh, the facility will be usable. The uh, first event, as Tammy says, is uh, a week from tomorrow, and there's a fair amount of work going on, but uh, as always, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen right at the end, the scoreboard, the sound system, all of that will happen uh, between now and then, and uh, it's really shaping up. There will be access to the field, there will be access for uh, spectators, and uh, there's really uh, three ways uh, to the facility right now from the west, also from the school side, from inside the school, and uh, the elevator also is going to be done. Uh, inspection is tomorrow, I want to say. Uh, and then the visitor side is uh, will be open as well. So uh, Portson's been working hand in hand with Dale Plessel and, and Amy to uh, make sure that access can be gained to the facility, that it can be used just like people want to use it. And uh, I don't know if anybody's seen the press box lately, but it is special looking. It, it really is beautiful. So it's quite a facility and we know people are really excited about getting there and uh, we're committed to getting them there for the first soccer match on the 16th. So these are the questions that I had from mm -hmm. even the player. Will the scoreboard hopefully be running? Up and by running. that, up and running, but the, <laughs> I don't think this game. Usually, this game is held at UD because it's under the lights, and I don't yes. think we're doing that because I, I think it's earlier. Uh, but so I'm not sure the lights are in and operable. I'm just not sure they've been tuned quite right yet. But uh, that's also on the agenda for uh, and concession stand. Concession stand got uh, the uh, city inspection today, so it's supposed to be also up, up and, and running. running. These are the questions people keep asking yeah. me, so I thought what I'm time coming is out the game and asking. Size? Do you know? I don't even know what time the game is, and my daughter's playing. Well, I think so. there are four games. Aren't there four games <laughs> that day? Well, two of them are over at Hempstead. JV games are at Hempstead. But it's um, men's are playing, and then the women, um, Hempstead seniors. So it's like a good. It sounds like a job for our communications director. <laughs> so this is next. Uh, next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So that's and then the following day is a big track meet. And there, there is a just a full docket. So. Uh, now, do you expect 4,000 spectators at the soccer match? Absolutely. Uh, okay. <laughs> Tammy's kid is good. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Boy, the pressure's on. So. But I, I, they're very excited. The, the, very excited. The, sure. the teams are I very excited go. to actually compete yeah, on those fields. So. And Charlie and I just walked the field today, and uh, it really is special. It, it's it is. A, It's going to be a fun venue. They really enjoy practicing mm. soccer on it, and I know yeah. the track kids are enjoying it. So it's, yeah. it's a great. Yeah. thing to see come to And uh, to Portson's yeah. testament, they really have uh, worked hand in hand with Dale and Amy to make sure that there is a program in place, uh, even with some areas that are still under construction, primarily just concrete paving out on the east side, but they really are working hard to make sure that that's up and running and people can get where they want to go. I'll bet a lot of people come. We should be prepared. Well, we don't. We're not really. This is kind of what they consider a they soft still, open, yeah. and you know, we'll keep continuing. To, I want to go. I'm, yeah, um, yeah. Do we know about sure there's going to be a lot of people. Do we know about when those four games are? What time of day? Oh, I could look really fast. Oh, uh, it's, 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 I can't we have somebody look. Check got, during the meeting, and we could report. Can get the information out. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, if you could so we'll just, know by the end of the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But and but we are going to have an official grand opening in the fall right. so just right. so people are aware it's going to be up and running and keep opening you know more and more as the construction gets finished but not the official um, grand opening until the fall season the soft but, opening. yeah this is the soft opening as you we bet. call it so great thank right. you so much thank I know you. they're excited I was also asked um, what about the um, the uh, people um, the, the community as far as uh, using the track for walking and stuff, is that are there hours on that, or I mean, what where are we at on that? I, I don't know that we've. Really I don't think anything's I, changed officially. Yeah, has it over where we were a year ago? Not that I'm aware of where it was before we redid, before it was redone. So even though there's construction going on over there, they can come like oh, early I morning. I see. And, I and don't know that it's fully open to the public yet. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm not sure who the right one to speak to that would be, but. Uh, uh, I, there's a little ways to go, and it's just, still a construction zone. I just want to make sure that our, our liability here, because yeah, right. you know we don't want to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The girls' game is at 6:15. I'm not sure what time the boys' game is. So at least I'm, I know the girls' game. Okay. Good. 
Okay, let's okay. move on. I'd like to move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution approving construction contract, certificate of insurance, and bonds be resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District that the construction contract and bonds executed and insurance coverage for the Kennedy School Edition remodel project as described in detail in the plans and specifications here, here for approved and which have been signed by the contractor B and the same are hereby approved and the Vice President is authorized to execute said contract on behalf of the district outlined as follows. Contractor, Ports and Construction, Inc. of Dubuque, Iowa. Dated contract March 12, 2013. Bond surety, United Fire and Casualty Company, $5,741,800. Dated bond March 12, 2013. It has been moved and seconded that the oh, Board of Education. Oh, is there more? No need a second. Oh, sorry. Second. All right. Thanks. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education Thanks. adopt the following resolution approving construction contract, certificate of insurance and bonds as read to contractor Ports and Construction, Inc. of Dubuque, Iowa, date of contract March 12, 2013, bond surety, United Fire and Casualty Company for $5,741,000. $41,800, date of bond, March 12th, 2013. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution approving construction contract, certificate of insurance, and bonds. Be it resolved by the Dubuque of Education and the Dubuque Community School District that the construction contract and bonds executed and insurance coverage for the Jones Campus Elevator Edition project as described in detail in the plans and specifications heretofore approved and which have been signed by the contractor B and the same are hereby approved and the Vice President is authorized to execute and contract on behalf of the district outlined as follows. Contractor, Epic Construction of Dubuque, Iowa. Date of contract, April 8th, 2013. Bond surety, Granite RE, Inc. $286,623. Date of bond, April 8th, 2013. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution approving construction contract, certificate of insurance, and bonds as read to contractor Epic Construction of Dubuque, Iowa, date of contract April 8, 2013, bond surety Granite RE, Inc. for $286,623, date of bond April 8, 2013. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Anderson Design and Consulting, Inc. for the Senior High School Small Gym Floor Replacement Project in the amount of $5,000. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Anderson Design and Consulting, Inc. for the Senior High School Small Gym Floor Replacement Project for the amount of $5,000. Is there any discussion? I think we're all happy to see this one get done. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Senior High School Small Gym Floor Replacement Project and set the date, time, and location as May 13, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. at the Forum, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively, tentatively approve the plan, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Senior High School Small Gym Floor Replacement Project and set the date, time, and location as May 3rd, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. at the Forum, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for the hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Kelleher will present the quarterly budget report. Well, Kevin, coming up here, I thought I spotted something interesting in the agenda. 
we've just awarded about $37 million worth of contracts, and every single one of them went to a Dubuque company. That's very good for the Dubuque economy. That's great. Um, good evening, board members, again. I have two things that I want to bring your attention to in the budget. If you look on tab 8, page 140, for the first item, uh, bring your attention to the general fund. Uh, you will see year-to-date activity plus encumbrances are at 73% of the budget. We are nine months through the year, which is 75%, so we're right on target um, and should end up actually a little bit lower than that for the total year, so that's a good sign. The second item I want to bring your attention to is on page 146. You will see total general fund revenue. The two columns I want to bring your attention to are year to date for this year compared to year to date last year. You'll see it's about two and a half million dollars lower. That is because the change in the instructional support levy. We only asked for two million this year, and last year's amount was seven million dollars for the. I'm sorry for the cash reserve levy. Let me clarify that it's the cash reserve levy difference. So you can see that five million dollar difference makes up most of that change or that difference. Any questions on that? Okay, I move that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report as presented. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. And you're going to review Any the general fund? general fund projections. In your handout is a chart showing um, the three kind of key financial projectors that are the indicators that we use to measure our economic, our, where we sit financially, the stability. Um, if you look, you'll see we use cash basis for one, fund balance basis for another, and then the authorized budget is the third. You will see for, we are projecting revenues this year at about $111 million for the total year. Um, expenditures, even though we have a budget of $119 million, we're looking realistically that'll be closer to $116 million actually spent. So how does that affect our year? You see it's increase and decrease in the, the cash balance of about 4.8 million, and that's tied also to the fund balance. They're relatively close in measurement. You see about a 5.6 million dollar decrease, however, in our unspent balance. So that's taking it down to the amounts we're projecting for the end of the year of cash of being 30 million 794,000. And if you remember earlier, we talked about not having a cash reserve levy rate because we want to have three months of expenditures, and that amount is 29 million dollars based on the current budget. So we exceed that. That's why there's no cash reserve levy this year. Fund balance. We want to try to have um, a, a solvency ratio of 5 to 10 percent. And based on the current fund balance year end projection, we're actually at 20.8 percent. Again, another good indication of our financial stability. The unspent balance, however, with that decline is right at our expectation or our hope for our target amount. You can see we're expecting to be about 9.9 .9 million at the end of the year. We would like to have 9.6 million. So we're right on target with our unspent balances where we would like to be. Now let's take a look at the unspent balance and compare that to what it has been. You can see, f this is the chart in your uh, handout that shows the history of the unspent balance. The blue line is the actual unspent balance at the end of each year. You can see the 9.9 .9 is where we're hoping to project to be at the end of this year. You can see the decline in unspent balance for the F fiscal year FY13-14. Our target again is in this orange colored line, solid line, 
of one month of expenditures. The orange colored range is really what um, state experts say that's what we should be at for a UEN district, which represents about $500 to $1,000 per pupil. So that's the range that they use for a marker. Um, the decline is due a couple things. The past history of 0% and 2% allowable growth that has decreased our ability to or has lessened the ability for us to increase our unspent balance. We've had to spend the dollars based on those zero and two percent increases. Um, this is using a three percent factor for increase in costs over the past year. So you can see we will have to work towards reducing that decline for the next fiscal year. Kevin, is that on, based on 3% allowable growth too? Is that what I see no, down there? No, it's just based on 3% expenditures, but 0% um, allowable growth for budget authority. And that's, Tammy, that's where your comment earlier comes in. We, we talked about the tax rate, we've talked about our need to raise money is, isn't there. It's be, quite honestly, we need to have the authority to spend those dollars, and that's why 4% uh, allowable growth for us for next year is imperative. 0%, 2% has been tough. The economy was, uh, there's some reason to understand why the uh, unspent balance, or I'm sorry, the allowable growth was that low. Currently, that need doesn't exist at the state level, so 4% allowable growth changes that direct that trajectory significantly. We still have work to do within that to, to, to flatten it off. Obviously, we don't want to keep looking at a roller coaster. We'd like to see a nice smooth line. But there are so many things outside of our control, like uh, uh, allowable growth, that, that makes that difficult. But uh, that's that's where the four percent uh, for for next year is 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 vital to us. We're fortunate. We started with fifteen point five million dollars. Many districts didn't, so we can ride that wave or have ridden that wave for a year or two. Other districts are are looking at reducing. Uh, staff significantly this year because they didn't they weren't in such a strong position to start this uh, zero percent two percent allowable growth and if you remember that large increase was due to the hard decisions we had to make you know several years ago and cut the budget by five million dollars so we did that it grew but without that change or that increase in allowable growth you know it's very difficult to spend what our authorized budget allows us to spend. It's hard to match our current year's expenditures to what the authorized budget calculation is for the year. Our, our health insurance increases alone, all the, you know, fuel for the buses, turning the lights on, all those things go up. Uh, we need the spending authority to, to keep pace with that. Um, and again, during the, the times uh, in the past where the economy was such that 0% was uh, deemed appropriate at the state level, I understand that, but uh, th that's not the current uh, fiscal position of the state, and so 4% is, if you are <coughs> inclined to advocate for a percent, 4% uh, would be very helpful. Well, it's just frustrating that our budget has to be turned in and certified, and we need to have the state, whatever the decision they're going to make, make the decision. and and. Yeah. Let us know how we're going to do it. The fact that they're going to wait and possibly not even get anything done leaves our school district, every school district in the state, just hanging and not knowing what to do. And it'll be at zero percent unless they make a decision, and that's the worst case scenario. And we can't, we can't do business. Nobody can do business this way. So. And remember that decision was actually supposed to be made for FY 13-14 last year. It's an Iowa law, but who holds the lawmakers accountable right. for the law? So in the, mean, in the meantime, you have employees that we're going into contract negotiations with who are forced to feel undervalued because we can't make a fair offer for contract negotiations. So you have to play it conservatively so we don't run ourselves into the ground and we give the impression to our most valuable asset that we don't value their time and their work efforts, which the whole thing is just broken. It's very, very frustrating. It is broken, and they seem to say it's broken on our end, but I think it's more broken on the legislature's end. So I know I've contacted as many as I can contact, and I know many of um, fellow board members have as well, and now it's the plea is out there to the public to 
to contact them and say they need to make a decision, they need to move on this, so we can do business. We, we, Kevin and I have to, the, 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 the district level, we have to assume worst case scenario. We, have we plan do. plan for the worst and hope for the best kind of a scenario. So when we don't know anything other than zero, we have to build a budget, we have to make plans based on the fact that it will be zero. It so it's projecting very difficult. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so just so I understand this, mm -hmm. this, the state law says requires the legislature and the governor to set an allowable growth rate April for the upcoming year. So that was last year they were supposed to set this allowable growth rate. And they didn't set it last year. And we went through three quarters of this legislative session without them addressing the topic of what the allowable growth rate is. It's just very frustrating. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess I guess that's what I'll leave it at. It's very frustrating. Yeah. It it's is. difficult to do planning and negotiating and well, for, staff. For us to have quality programming, for us to, I mean, we should, any large business is planning a year, year and a half in advance at least. Mm -hmm. And for us to not even know starting July 1st, we're only three months, three away. months away from what what we can plan. We have to build a budget based on zero. I mean, April fifteenth is. God. Yeah. Next well, let's week. hope. I know they're going into committee again tomorrow to hash this out. I read. So. Let's, well, the, let's hope. The problem starts with the fact that we send our money to them, right. and then they're kind enough to give some of it back to us. Correct. That's there's problem numero uno right there. <laughs> let's start with that. All right. Well, and I would like to say that they had that Cracker Barrel this Saturday, or this last Saturday, and uh, they discussed that, and uh, Senator Bowman, who's on that, who's the chair on that committee, the Education Committee, and he's uh, well aware of the fact, in fact, I had, uh, I was able to talk with him as he was heading out of the parking lot, and he, he first of all, his first question is, well, how many people uh, three years ago did you, did you lay off? And I told him, he was just flabbergasted, he's really. And, is he, uh, and, um, and so he's well aware of, the, of, of that fact. And uh, so we're, we're doing everything we can from, from the board side uh, to, to let, let the legislators know what's going on. But, um, and I think that we do have an advocate uh, with Senator Bowman, basically sure. since he's a, a school teacher uh, in the Maquoketa uh, system. So he understands what... Uh, All of our local yeah. representation is, is yeah. well-informed, well-versed in doing what they can. Um, but there's a tug of war going on and so well, and the changes that they want to do are good changes yeah. it's just let's come to a happy ground and just make a decision just just figure out if anything if they can't make a decision give us something to work with for next year and then hash out their problems we had the same conversation a month ago it's <laughs> and we're not yeah. any further along it's it's just all we can do is keep playing yeah, it's, it's been for a couple of years it's now ridiculous all right thank you thank you Although it is very cathartic to sit here and complain. <laughs> so I, I do feel better than I did five minutes ago. Well, good. Good. No more complaining. Let's move on Jeez. to happier things. Do you want to talk about anything from Ed programs? Do we programs? have to approve that, or did we already do it that? It was under consent agenda. There's no, 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 no. I'm talking about No, that was just information just only. Information. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, we had an educational program meeting, but it was after our lengthy technology meeting so uh, we just we, we got a little bit of an update from uh, the, the district special education teacher on, on seclusion and restraint and how it's been used and you know it's an interesting uh, subject uh, we're looking into it more um, for crisis prevention training CPI um, and and uh, bring some other programming into the uh, into the schools because again I think what's become apparent is we're not using it correctly um, across the across the system and we're going to try and figure out if we can you know put put better procedures in place. Um, other than that went through uh, reviewed some policies only made the one change to the Clark from Clark College to Clark University on B. Yeah. Thanks to Mike size. All right. Okay, moving on to review the technology plan. Are you wanting to? I am. Mike, I'm kind of trying to make eye contact with oh. Mike. He's ignoring <laughs> me. Is it possible for us to project this, Mike, for those in the audience using the using the Elmo? Elmo. The Elmo. The 
that's what they're called. Yeah, it's yeah, called Elmo. I don't know why I'm sure that's yeah. a... Tickle. Tickle. <laughs> this will take us just a, to a second to uh, set this up. A, uh, but just a few minutes ago. Let's complain a little more about the budget. Well, I thought that I could uh, tell you what times the games start. Oh, I, well, I've got oh, that, hey. too. I've that got that written down, too. The uh, boys' sophomore soccer game is at 4 p.m. Yep. The girls' varsity is at 6.15, and the boys' varsity is at 8 p.m. And then Slow the girls... Down. Girls sophomore plays over at Hempstead, I believe, at so 4 o'clock. Boys sophomore time at 4. 4 o'clock is boys sophomore. At Dalzell, yeah. Girls. Girls is at 4 o'clock at Hempstead Field. Yeah. Girls varsity is at 6.15. Boys varsity is at 8 o'clock. Hempstead versus senior, so what a great way to open up. Girls field. varsity at 6.15. 6.15, yep. And then 8 o'clock is boys varsity. Yep. Thank you. Well, I just thought they were good. Yes. Everybody can join in on the fun. The first game's at 4? That's a soft 4. Perfect. 4 o'clock. And what kind of track meet is that on the so, next day? Uh, is that a conference or? Yep. I initially intended to just do this as a handout, but we've got significantly more people in the audience uh, than we generally have for a board meeting, so I thought we would maybe project this really quickly. Um, as you know from committee meetings, conversations that we've had, that we really want to uh, bring to the board as part of our strategic plan uh, an integration of technology in order to meet our uh, our goals of ensuring that all of our students are college and career ready in the 21st century. One of the things that we think we need to do to put the right tools in the hands of our staff uh, is to is to up our game with, with technology to give our students and our staff more uh, opportunity to experience um, technology for educational purposes, for problem solving, for creative thinking, for communication, for all of the ways they're going to have to use technology in their lives, whether they go uh, to college, whether they go right into the workforce, whether they go into the military, everybody is relying heavily on, on technology. So just to give you a, sort of a brief overview timeline-wise, what it is we're asking for a commitment of uh, from, uh, from the one cent sales tax, which you'll notice, um, I guess to preface, uh, to start off, we, we talk a little bit about the district is behind the game to some degree with our student access to technology in part because until a year and a half, two years ago, we couldn't use one cent sales tax dollars for technology. That law was changed uh, about two years ago, I think it's two years ago this August. Um, and so we've formulated a plan uh, on now that some of the infrastructure, the back end work has been done is how do we put technology in the hands of our staff first and then our students? How do we provide professional development and uh, make sure that our, our teachers are comfortable with the technology before they start using it in the classroom, but at the same time providing those opportunities. So this is uh, sort of our well, the first four years of the plan. Uh, we're asking that we uh, expend $3.5 million per year for the first four years, that we would upgrade all of our um, computer labs using a, a virtual, um, uh, Thank you. I can slide into that, a virtual desktop. Um, is that getting? technology which makes it extremely cost effective to do that. Um, we're, so taking the labs that currently exist and adding to that, adding a lab at every house at the middle school level and a lab at every department at the high school level. So that immediately uh, by next fall increases the access to technology by having more labs but also increases the access to current technology. These labs will be based on uh, um, uh, the most recent version of Windows, um, but it's done through virtual desktop, and I won't try to explain that. Um, maybe Ron can at a later meeting, but it basically it capitalizes on the computing power. Basically, a, a student will have in front of them a monitor, um, a mouse, and a keyboard, and it takes the tower out of the scenario, but it doesn't degradate the uh, uh, the experience. So that's where we're going to start. Um, we're also going to increase at the secondary level um, the use of mobile technology. What we eventually want to get to is the technology that is flexible, versatile, but also mobile so that students can use those, teachers can use those where they're most effective. So we're updating the labs first because that's cost effective and then we're jumping right into an increase in uh, tablets. People are familiar with uh, all variety of, of tablets. We'll use a, a Windows-based uh, tablet. Um, we have 22 teachers this year. 
uh, who are going through is 22 lane professional development on how to incorporate this technology into this classroom next year another uh, cohort will go through that technology the following year another cohort as they complete the training we will give them access to uh, a mobile cart with tablets on it 25 to 30 tablets on the cart depending upon that on that need focusing first on the high school and middle school uh, those are the students who we need to get that technology in their hands uh, this as quickly as we can quite honestly because they're closer to graduation. So the vision is that at the middle school level there is a tablet in every a cart, a uh, mobile cart with tablets in every house. So now every house has a lab and a mobile cart with tablets. So six teachers uh, sharing two opportunities to use uh, classroom uh, size technology. The remaining carts will go to the high school uh, teachers again going through that training and so we'll increase it depending upon how many carts we're ultimately able to to afford and put in their classroom so every department will have uh, a lab we'll, we'll start to introduce carts in year one in year two we will significantly increase those carts almost all of those will go it says middle school and high school but almost all will go to the high school because the middle schools will have those uh, one per one per house already so you'll see 1200 tablets 1,200 tablets, uh, and then in the third year, we'll refresh the teacher laptops, um, which if you'll remember, we purchased uh, 850 teacher laptops two years ago, so they'll be four and a half years old when we replace those, uh, which is about the life expectancy of a, uh, of a, uh, a laptop. And we will add tablets at the elementary level. We will add one tablet cart per grade level, so the fifth grade team at uh, Kennedy will share a cart of 30, a second grade uh, team at uh, Fulton will share a cart, and so the principals will, will work with sort of how to implement some of that, but again, those teachers will be provided the professional development so that they can effectively uh, utilize that technology. And then the ultimate goal for us would be 16, 17 to go to a one-to-one -one computing scenario at the high school level. So when, uh, across the bottom here, you'll also notice that we are increasing things like interactive projectors. If you're familiar with what a smart board does, an interactive projector uh, is, is the same, it's the, it's the most recent version of that technology so that the short throw projector projects on a flat surface and you can manipulate that uh, the same way that you can a smart board. If you remember from the elections, uh, some, of the, some of the newscasters were using some of that stuff and moving that around. So that's what we envision having available in our classrooms at, the, at, the, uh, uh, at all levels, elementary, middle school, and high school. Again, there's going to be, not probably every classroom, uh, we will want to provide the professional development so that the teacher has uh, not only the desire but the, the training to be able to use that. Um, effectively. So um, across time in those four years we would like to get to a scenario where at the high school level it's one-to-one. -one. Kids have technology in their hands every day. Middle school level, frequent use of technology. Six teachers use, utilizing a lab or a cart, that's a pretty, uh, pretty significant increase from where they're at today. And then at the elementary level, a little less technology because much of what they teach, you know, grounded in the basics, technology is probably not as imperative. So we, we immerse them more and more as they progress through the system. The time they reach um, uh, graduation, they have a good grasp on the use of technology for problem solving, communicating, all those 21st century skills that we wrapped into our uh, strategic plan. And then the $2.5 million and across the bottom is vital because we'll need to refresh this equipment. I mean, it really has become the cost of doing business. It, the day of purchasing technology, I mean, that's what the, the history has been of most school districts. Much of the technology we have today is 10, 12 years old because we had the money to purchase it at one point, but there was no plan to refresh that technology. So that two and a half million dollars is a refresh cycle so that as tablets, uh, as projectors, as things age out, we'll have the resources uh, uh, available to upgrade or, or replace, refresh those, that technology. So uh, we're very excited about this plan. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I haven't received a single phone call with anybody complaining about anything other than that this is great. Great. I've heard people make comments like it's been an inclusive process, that Ron knows what he's doing, he's got his arms around it. People in the trenches that 
people, the handful of people I've spoken with feel very, very confident in the leadership behind this initiative, which is, that's great. One of the things I guess I want to be really clear about, and I don't remember if I mentioned it up front, is you know, occasionally you'll hear people talk about, well, are you going to use technology to replace teachers? Absolutely not. Re education, the learning process is about relationship. We need expert teachers. We've got some, some excellent teachers. But when we can take those expert teachers and we can put this tool in their hand and put those two things together, then then we blow the roof off of it. I mean, we really have the, the there's no limit to the potential. So I don't ever want somebody to see this and say, well, you know, you're replacing teachers with technology. Absolutely not. We want excellent teachers who develop relationships with their students who have access to technology so that they, students can learn in a 21st century environment. One of, the, one of the things we talked about, too, at the committee meeting was that, you know, if this just becomes a way to read a book or turn in your homework, flawed system. Our, our, you know, we got to make sure that uh, I, I had mentioned, I, I recently took a class at a community college and it was, you know, our smart board was used as an overhead projector and we did our, you know, our fancy computer program to turn in our papers. We did nothing different than you would have, you would have done. So it's really incumbent upon, you know, and one of the things, you know, we talked about was that kind of stepping up, starting with the high school, starting, you know, making sure that, what is it, 22 teachers go through, learn how to do it, they share their lessons um, with each other, and, and, and the professional development is as much top, bottom up as it is top down, and, and uh, Absolutely. we really want to make sure that, yeah. you know, we take advantage of this resource rather than just have a fancy board in every classroom. Absolutely. The temptation is to go out and purchase all of it. We could condense this into one year instead of four years. We'd you know, have to forego some other projects, but the reality is that's not what we need to do. We need to bring this on a step at a time. We need to build sort of a critical mass with our teachers, provide the professional development, provide the experience for the students. I mean, I, I hope that there are teachers who aren't able to go through this training next year or the following year just because the numbers are so large and they're demanding, where is my technology? That's a good sign that we're doing it the right way in creating that, that, that momentum that will carry us forward. If we roll in and hand every student a, a, uh, a device next year or went faster than this, I believe we would end up with yeah. at least some scenarios like you're talking about where they say, fine, I'll use this the same way I used to use uh, a whiteboard, which I replaced like from my chalkboard, like which I went right back here. from. So, um, well, okay. <laughs> the, yeah. the, but, you know, again, I, I also just am reminded of a conversation we had at one of those uh, sessions with Tammy Deer and, and her group sitting around a table at that brainstorming summit. But really, you know, the, the bottom up um, best practices where we can figure out who's doing something great at Fulton, who's doing something great at Eisenhower, and, and you know, pass, use technology, utilize technology to pass, you know, what's happening great around the district, I think will make us so much better. And uh, at some point we can probably have uh, Lynn or David uh, do a conversation about how the professional development really has changed, especially with the technology. It's not about bringing them to the forum and showing them what's the, the latest application or that sort of thing, but it really is more job embedded. It's it's in the classroom. It's, it's going in and observing what What's this teacher doing versus that teacher? How do we share that information? How do we move together uh, uh, as educators? And so I, that's exactly so the model that one, we're, we're aiming at. One, I think it'll make us great, but it'll also give the teachers the sense of empowerment and, and they'll feel good about themselves and make a difference. And I think the whole process gets much better fast. Well, I know this is a lot of money to be spent that comes out of our um, one cent sales tax, which would go towards buildings. But right. as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter how pretty the building is. If you don't have the technology that our kids need to have to learn, it's not going to make a difference. And this needs to be a part of that plan as we you know, talk about the facilities. And it does cut into that budget a little bit, sure but does. this is imperative. And, it, and it, I like to see how it's, I know you've gone through and talked about the refresh cycle so we're not stuck where we are right now Absolutely. with computers that are ancient.
Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's it's going to be a fine line, and it's a mix that we're going to have to 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 work on. How much do we spend on facilities versus technology? But I think this is a great start. And you know, we're looking four or five years out. Things may change in in year three or year four or year five. I mean, the further out it goes, the more flexible it'll need to be. Technology will change, and we're talking about tablets here. But by 16, 17, I don't know what uh, what the technology will be that provides that resource. So, you know, it's really solid in 13, 14 in my opinion, 15, 16, or 14, 15, you know, 15, 16, 16, 17, it gets a little grayer because that technology changes every six months and so to build a plan that's built on four or five years, the, the most important piece is the commitment to the resources and then making sure that we're using the, those resources wisely. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions? All right. We want to just Probably will stay up there with the next one, won't you? Uh, I guess I probably could. <laughs> We're going to talk a review of the strategic plan goals that we asked to have updated for specifics. I'm on the game. <laughs> I'll talk about Business before pleasure. <laughs> I didn't bring any carrots. Okay. Um, and this one's probably going to struggle to fit on here, but uh, at a previous meeting we talked about. Um, uh, and the update to the strategic plan and before we dive into this one I want to make a couple of comments and so we were asked you know get out of the weeds a little bit make it a little bit more big picture give us a measurable in each of these areas and so that's what we did that we tried to cut it down to you know five or six that wasn't really possible so I think what you'll find here are 16 or 17 measurables aligned to the goals and aligned to uh, the assessments to each of those goals also, what you'll find on here are many areas where it says we're creating that data right now. Um, and I think that's a, a good sign that we're not just doing what we've always done. Some things we've measured forever, student achievement. We've measured that forever, so we have some solid numbers to give you. Some things, uh, like our, our student uh, development on the second page, that's new for us to, to measure. So we're in the process of measuring that this year and coming back after we've had a chance to, to measure that. So let me uh, see if I can zoom in here. So it's readable. Maybe it's readable to you, but it's really not to me. So to what extent our third graders, sixth graders, and 11th grader proficient in, in reading and math. So um, what we did is we took the, uh, the Iowa test uh, scores, third grade, sixth grade, 11th grade, reading, math. Uh, we didn't, th that's changed, so there's not, we wanted to give you a historical perspective, so we wanted to give you the 10-11 uh, uh, perspective in each of these areas, then the 12 or 13, and then give you a goal for 15 or 16. So there's a little bit of history there, but some perspective of, of where we're at. So I don't need to go through each of those areas uh, specifically. I certainly will answer questions, but so each one fits on, on that page. Uh, there were one page for each uh, uh, goal area. Uh, one of the things you'll see across the bottom is uh, increase the number of students uh, who meet the college readiness standard in all four content areas. We're going to increase that by 1% a year. That is a significant uh, step. Those numbers look small, but um, that's where we're starting from. And then the graduation rate, that's defined by the state. We don't know what our graduation rate was um, for the uh, 12, 13 school year yet, but we'll have that information shortly. And then the goal is by state mandate 100% by 15, 16. So that's why you see 100% uh, of that goal. That is the goal that the state has set as part of uh, the No Child Left Behind. So if you have questions, feel free to. So I spoke a little bit about student development. Um, again, a lot of these, uh, can you read that if I go further out? So a lot of these you're going to see that that data was not tracked historically. I need one of those technology classes I was talking about. Um, and so what are we doing if we haven't tracked it? So we're developing that data this year. Okay. A lot of that data will be available this spring. We'll establish a goal and we'll fill in that goal for the 15-16 school year this summer at a, at, a, at a board meeting when we have uh, 
a year's worth of, of measurement for that. You know, one of the things we talked about is a co-curricular, extracurricular activities. We're collecting that data right now, but obviously we've got to get through the spring, get through track, get through uh, um, uh, soccer, uh, those, those activities that takes place in the spring. So we can say what percent of our students are involved in some co-curricular activity and then build uh, some goals from there. And you're counting clubs and clubs, everything. Anything yep, we, that's beyond yep. the regular school. Day. We're building a system that that will tell us who is involved with something at school other than going to class. Right. And we'll, from that, we'll figure out what the percent is. Mm -hmm. We will choose a well, progression till we get to the point where we've got all of our students involved in something. And from that, we'll also do some surveying to say what is it that'll keep you here or get you here early. We understand we can't, for some kids, the traditional uh, activities work great. For some kids, they don't. It's just not a match with who they are, what their interest is. You know, we're spending a lot of money on technology. How can we use some of that technology? An awful lot of kids like technology. So um, some technology uh, clubs and those sorts of things. Stan, we're, we're not, I don't see a number here until three years from now, uh, an accountability mm -hmm. number, if you will. That, to me, seems like an eternity. And it's it's a little disappointing. Now, I'd like to know. I mean, I see where we're where we're headed, a 15, 16 number. What about 13, 14? Well, we had that conversation, you know, to talk about. We can, pardon. I mean, we talked about those numbers. We have those yeah, we they have are. those numbers. We thought we would. Okay. You know, do it in, in, we track those numbers all the time. And so we can add those numbers to this form. We can put as many columns in there as, as you're comfortable with. So if you'd like to see a year-by-year year progression, that's, that's easy to do. We were looking at, so what are, what are sort of significant steps forward? And knowing so that year-by-year, year, that'll be smaller, those will be smaller percentages. So we have set specific measurable deadline goals for 2000. 13, 2014. In the areas in which we have that data available. So for a lot of these things, like I said, this, this is new. We haven't tracked this before, so it's taking it, we're gonna have to collect that data. We're, number one, we're gonna have to figure out a process, which I let me talk in the present tense because we've figured that out in some areas and others we're still working on it, so that it is meaningful and accurate data. I mean, we could pull You've sat through the meetings where we have lots of lots of numbers. So we want to make sure these are numbers that really mean okay. something and really impact kids and their education, whether it be yeah. around achievement or uh, participation or, or community involvement. So that's the uh, that's the reason for some of this. Is we, we need to get a year of experience. We passed this in November, and so you know to take this year as as our as our baseline in the areas where we've never tracked that data before seems to make sense we need a full school year of of experience to know you know how many kids are participating what is the you know, the achievement data tends to come out way too far after the fact uh, from the state level so we're using this year to set that baseline and if you want us to put you know fill in those in between years we can certainly do that but we also wanted to look at systematic change over time so that's why there's a there's a couple year gap in there but we have that data in the areas in which we collect the data currently now some of these areas like I'm pointing out we're just learning we're just beginning to collect that data other questions uh, community engagement very little data has been collected historically. One piece is that we believe is vital is parent-teacher conferences. So that's where you see three years ago we were at 78%. Now we've diminished to 75%. Our goal is to get back to 78% and keep climbing from there. The reason those numbers have diminished, we've done a lot of that to ourselves. Power school, and grades are available to a, a, a parent on a regular basis, so we've so we've seen a dip in attendance based on power school because people say, oh, I don't need to come well, anymore because I'm how, up to date, or email. Some teachers are very effective at keeping parents up to date using uh, email or that So type that of measure to me, <coughs> as far as measuring, if I, I would be under the 25% of non-engaged parent, because I So what do we have to, to my, do to get you there? What, why do I need to go there if I'm in contact with my child's teacher through email, I'm in contact with my child's information through PowerSchool, and the process is a pain-killing, 
all night event at the high school level and the middle school level. So, to, for me to be, I mean, I think the measurement should be if, if you're in, con if the teacher can measure you're in contact with the parent, mm -hmm. that should be. Con if Why can, is it just on parent teacher conferences? Is what I'm saying because I think the process is painful to a lot of parents that I know a lot of parents they get to the point where they're like I'm not going anymore mm -hmm. I know where my kid is doing I've talked to the teachers and if you're only measuring on this I don't think we're measuring correctly yeah. well and we'll learn some of those lessons as we go I think those are all good points it's yeah. about engagement how do we make how do we yeah. decide if a parent's engaged in their son or daughter's education I mean, parent teacher conference is one way but you're right it certainly isn't the only way right and it shouldn't be yeah. Because, like I said, I would be a 25% of a non-engaged parent, and mm -hmm. you know I'm not that. You, you can <laughs> sure. work on it. And we're, and we're trying to keep, you know, again, we're trying to learn. We're trying to keep these goals. You know, I, I felt kind of, all right, we're coming in with, I don't know what the number is, 16, yeah. and we really were looking to get to six or eight. Well, 16 yeah. is, is one per, so some of these things we'll probably have to change uh, mm -hmm. over time as we move forward. That's fair. Effective resource management, you know, that's basically what we just reported out tonight. Um, uh, talking about solvency ratio, unspent balance, and then technology available for students. If you remember those goals, those are the, the primary uh, pieces that we have in there. So where are we at um, with our solvency ratio? You'll see where our goals are, uh, our unspent balance. Those are easy numbers because we've tracked those over time and we know what healthy, is I mean, there are some some standards uh, in the accounting profession that tell us this is where you should be, and then the technology across the bottom again you'll see a consistent upswing in access to technology, and that's just in reference to the plan I presented earlier. So all of these things have plans behind them, like the technology plan, but this is the snapshot that you can I mean pull out and, and look at you know how are, how are we doing with uh, technology there or whatever the issue is. Well, I th thank you for coming up with these um, ways of measuring. I think it's it's difficult because we haven't asked. That's know, what we're finding kind of stuff. to be difficult, and it may seem like it's going slow, but the reality is it's going extremely fast. I mean, again, remember this was this was approved plan in November, and it's it's uh, is it April? It's April. You know, so to, to start to define how we're going to measure, start to pull that data, to realize we're asking for that data often from the same people over and over and over again, uh, teachers and, and other people, so not wanting to ask them for every piece of data immediately to stagger that in a way that doesn't, that doesn't bury them with that, with that information. Uh, one of the things we talked a lot about today is um, uh, recruitment and retention and how will we uh, measure retention and that's something that you know, you won't find on here yet, but something we're continuing to talk about because we don't want to retain 100% of our teachers, quite honestly. You know, there's a certain, there's a certain uh, ratio of, of teachers where we're going to make the wrong decision and hire the wrong person, and after a short period of time, we need to rethink that decision and, and, uh, and move forward with that. So it's not as simple as saying we want 100% retention or we, what does that really mean and how do we quantify and track retention that is good for students. All of these things should, when measured, should improve what you saw on the first page and that's student achievement. I think it's a continuous improvement uh, process. Absolutely. It's going to have to grow and, and I, I think the point you made about retention is the same point Tammy made about the conferences. Yep. There's, of the 22 percent of the people that don't go, maybe there's 11 percent that are engaged and happy and have meaningful relationships and that have yeah. and that don't need yeah. to participate don't feel they need to participate yeah. in the conference because they're doing so many other things and there's some percentage so the same with the retention just because we're not retaining all of our, our employees doesn't mean that's necessarily sometimes a bad thing Absolutely. so I guess the goal is to reach the goals and the strategic plan it's hopefully we can get to the point where we have some meaningful targets and things that we're focusing on to get to that goal and it's gonna I, I 
it's going to take some time for this to get to something that we all can be very excited about. Absolutely. And I guess I just would want the board to know we do spend a great deal of time going through this, trying to figure out exactly what that is. It, it, it's usually not our first thought. Well, retention, let's figure out how many teachers, you know, let's look at cohorts and three years in and five years in and ten years in. But then you stop and you think, well, we shouldn't have 100% after five years because we've not been that perfect at hiring that everybody we hire we want to still have here in five years. And so what are the right goals for, the, for, for those? Uh, uh, for those, so we we, it is an evolving uh, situation, and we'll continue to improve it. And I think we recognize that, and I also think that what we're asking for the measurement, I know I don't want it to be the same thing you've always measured, and Absolutely. the same thing being regurgitated. Okay. You know that has always been done because that makes that makes the job. Not that I want to make your job more difficult, but that's not where you're going to get the change. Well, that's right. It's and not going to so, stretch or, or right. You're right, and that and that's why in some of those where you say it's not available yet because we're we're trying to develop in some of those areas that we're focusing on, you know, more quantitatively than we have in the past. And and, and Lynn, you could probably refresh, but at that one, I think it was. Two uh, ed programs meetings ago, you had that comparative analysis research thing where it was if 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 like a kid is underperforming in the second grade, they're supposed to get 22 points better. And I think you know that kind of if we could build some of that kind of um, analysis, if you, you were there, if you remember what I was talking about, I think that would be really good, where we could put real numbers. And One of the things, the changes that we looked at with Iowa Test is we, and we're, we're used to growing up with that ourselves, is looking at uh, percentiles. And that is important information. It compares your student to other students in the district or the nation or the state. But we've also started with the renorming, which you notice on that first page, data not comparable. The test was renormed in 2011, so you can't go back more than two years right now. And we, we looked at the issue of, let's just not talk about kids as they compare to each other. Let's talk about how kid, every single kid in this district grows and how much do they grow. So we can really celebrate the fact that that our children who are in special education, and I'm doing this from memory, so please forgive sure. me, but in third grade, 67% of our kids in special education grow more than what it is statistically expected that they should. That's a celebration. That's a celebration for our teachers. It's a celebration for those students and their families. And likewise, as we looked at various points across, are we getting the growth for every single kid? Not, oh, I made the 40, 41st percentile for no child left behind, or my kid's over the 90th percentile. It doesn't matter. Did they grow? Right. Yeah. So looking at that differently is yeah. an area that we've really investigated with our instructional coaches. And I, I guess from my perspective, Perspective. And again, I know this is really hard, but I think if there was a way to quantify any of that in here, and again, easier said than done, I get it. Um, but I think that, to me, I thought those were really sort of inspiring stats. And as a parent, I would say, you know, again, if, you know, I have kids, one who's a super duper student and one who's pretty good. And, you know, again, if my super duper student is supposed to improve by 30 points and improves by 28, you know, I probably shouldn't take him out for ice cream. Whereas, uh, um, you know, so I think, I think that's, I, to me, I found that data very useful. Um, and I, again, I don't know if it's easy to put in here, but if it was, I think that would be pretty neat. Well, there's another way to look at this, too, that's not necessarily data related, but when I saw, and, and we're familiar on the board with the work that we're doing with dropout prevention, sure. is, that, is it Tom Kirchner, is that the, the fellow? Yep. When you pick up the paper and read, you know, I mean, he's out there beating the pavements trying to get these kids engaged, and, and you say, well, we're doing this, we're doing this program, we're doing this program, we're doing this program. I mean, somebody's got to work pretty hard to, they really got to want to get out to drop out if, they're, if we're going to let them drop out. And, and that makes me feel, I mean, yeah. and that may not show up in a graduation rate or say any kind of formalized statistic, but knowing that we have solid programs in place like that program for dropout prevention makes me feel very good about the Dubuque Community School District. And there's a lot of programs that are like that, mm -hmm. that 
maybe not able to quantify in a 75% to 80% number, but I feel good that they're out there and I feel comfortable with the people. I feel great that the people doing that are doing such a great job and that makes me feel like we've got a great school. Those kind of stories make me feel like we have a great school district. So as you think about how to quantify and achieve these goals in the strategic plan, I, I would ask you to think about telling stories like the story that was told in the paper on Sunday with Tom and how he's addressing dropout and prevention. You know what, to that point, um, and we talked about this a lot a long time ago, but I, I uh, would also say, you know, try and figure out which programs aren't producing the results we yeah, like absolutely. and get rid yeah. of them. Definitely. So. I think we've, right. I know that you're working on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? No. Oh. On the Sorry, Stan. Thanks, Stan. That's good stuff. Okay. Um, we need to go through the motions please. under new business. I uh, move that the Board of Education receive and file a letter from Wasker, Thor, Wimmer, and Mark Collier. Sounds good. PC and authorize the board president to respond, indicating the request is an impermissible expenditure of public funds. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file letter from Wasker, Dorr, Wimmer, and McCoolier, PC, and authorize the board president to respond, indicating the request is an imp impermissible expenditure of public funds. Is there any discussion? Do you want to? Do we need to? Give any further discussion? Sure, well, mm -mm. okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Next one. I move. I move that the Board of Education excuse seniors from making up four snow days in June. <laughs> Bunch of kids will be happy about this one. We're not going to get a lot of hate mail on this one, are we? <laughs> I move that everybody except for George's daughter. The, I think uh, I'm going to. I've had this conversation <laughs> already. Yeah, I'm going to abstain from this. Oh, no, you can. Personal. Uh, well, I, it's been moved. I, I, will, I would like to say something. Second, let me get okay, to discussion. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education excuse seniors for making up four snow days in June. Discussion. Well, I'm. I would like to just make a, a brief, brief comment here. Um, you know, I'm going to vote yes on this with some reservations. Uh, you know, I'm, I know that a no vote by one member won't mean anything. Um, this is another reason why our graduation date needs to be changed from Memorial Day weekend. Uh, because it falls early this year, not only are we proving four days of education that can be missed because of snow days, but do you know that the seniors also miss another two days of instructional time because grades have to be in two days before their last day of school so that this district is ready for graduation on Memorial Day. Uh, two days that the seniors will just sit around because uh, grades have already been turned in. Uh, so folks, you know, that's, that's six days of instructional time uh, we have not only cheated our seniors out of, but uh, that is six days of paid education that the taxpayers, and I'm, I'm included in on that, have our tax dollars wasted on non-education days for our seniors. So now I'm, I'm pointing this out because something needs to be done to our calendar for 2015. Uh, I'm getting tired of not having the flexibility to give the kind of education uh, I as a taxpayer along with the people I represent um, expect from America's best small town school district. Oh, thank you. Any other comments or discussion? I'll yeah, I think we've had, this, this, this is a problem that's gone on for a number of years and, is when, and if we're going to graduate the seniors before the end of the year, I don't see how we get around from not making, having to make up the snow days. Well, we, I mean, we, we can't do that unless right. we... The, whether it's, whether it's a memorial or any other weekend, unless it's a date after, you know, later, later in the, in the Spring Unless our graduation summer. is after the end of the formal right. school year. There's we, really no way around that. There's also, that, that's also true about the two days. There is a two day window by which, you know, seniors take finals, they do all those things, and the, and the teachers need to, and this, and this is true in every school district I've ever been associated with, where the teachers need that time to, to grade the finals, to grade the research papers, whatever it is. And so that we can figure out who actually graduated. I mean, we need to get those grades in the in the system. So, really, the only way the choice really is to 
if you're going to have a graduation date, Memorial Day or other, that's during the normal school year, you're going to have that. The only right. way to avoid that is to push graduation way back beyond yeah the, the normal school year. So I guess you'd be looking at June. I don't know what the Sunday would be, the seventh or the eighth or something in that ballpark this year. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the snow days in Iowa limit. I mean, the weather in Iowa kind of ties our hand to certain things. But the graduation date—that's our own decision making as far that's as how, as far as that goes. The two two things the citizens keep saying loud and clear: they really like Memorial Day weekend for graduation. Number one, we hear that a lot. Number two. They love uh, the fact that we have a spring break. We haven't checked on the graduation lately. Yeah, the one I mean, we, as part of our community, you know, conversation is one of the things in the strategic plan. We certainly can. Uh, we have the capability now of, of checking float, that, float that, rechecking that. One of the that. things I heard, I think Tom, it was you said that district got in a bunch of hot water a few years back when they changed it and I think yeah. you know you could argue was it Memorial Day or was it no, changing they changed it? No. it after it was set no yeah, that's my, that's but that's yeah. no that's my point is it is yeah. it is it really Memorial Day or were they mad because you changed it well there are no. very few districts that have it on Memorial I mean they're they yeah. float it it's not always on the exact same Memorial Day weekend. It's floated on a different day, which makes your calendar structure a lot more flexible. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking at. Not necessarily, it's, it's how we structure the entire calendar, not just because of graduation. It, it's how it affects when we start the semester. Yeah. For um, a lot of people talk too that they want to have the semester end at Christmas. Well, that affect that also means you have to change graduation date. So, you know, I think to just say, do we want to change graduation is not a fair question. It's here's what it all, here's if we change graduation, here's what else can be changed. And if we don't, here's what cannot, so. Absolutely, changing that one factor makes things much more flexible, but it's, it's to the point of we'll have to do some uh, Community. Communications with our stakeholders to find out sure. you know, of what value is that, and it's certainly been that way for for a long time. But certainly, we have the capability of uh, of actively seeking out responses to that. One of the things that we sometimes struggle with is that we give people an opportunity to to send an email in. Well, you tend to hear from the people who dislike something. So, how can we actively poll to have more uh, uh, accurate data about what? the average stakeholder in the community feels is. Well, a decision like this has to be made a whole year yeah. in advance yeah, it, for graduation, it, it, so. That's right. There's nothing, yeah, to, and nobody has to worry for the next calendar year, so. Calendar set for next year, but next The following fall year is where we have Would be the time to have the try discussion. to determine that because it's by December that we'll have built the calendar for the Which means we need year. to start gathering the data now. Right. That's right. And I think we're all open to hearing what that data set, or what, those, what that says, so. To keep our seniors from worrying that they're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> it has been moved and seconded that the Board of Education excuse seniors from making up four snow days in June. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. I did enjoy Otto's speech. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Last brother. piece of, um, I need a motion. I move that the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action for student number 802105 at this time. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education take no further <laughs> disciplinary action for student number 802105 at this time. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Okay, any other board member or administrative issues that are not on the agenda? Nobody? Nobody one. has anything? Anybody down front? All right. Upcoming board meeting is on May 13th. And anything else, anybody? Last chance? All right, we are adjourned.